もしやコスモではコスモ,コスモ AP ラミデュアリースポーツ Welcome to episode 37 of my 76 Mazda Cosmo restoration. Last episode, I essentially plumbed the front half of the fuel system, including the engine bay and all the undercar lines. This episode, we're going to deal with the back half, which is the fuel tank. This episode will cover the conversion of this old carbureted fuel tank to handle a high pressure. Fuel injection pump. Well, because of some events and circumstances over the last two months that have kind of meant I haven't been working on the car as much as I wanted to, this fuel tank has actually sat here with、uh, full strength, super clean in it, for probably about two months. I'm going to imagine that's going to mean it's ridiculously clean inside. So, I'll、uh, drain it via siphon, just as I did previously, and、uh, we'll see what the result is. Huh. Oh, that is nasty. Huh. Yuck. Don't. Do that. It's a stupid thing to do, and you should never do it. Just giving it a few good rinsings with hot water to remove all the super clean and other residue, and then I can begin modifying it for an in tank high pressure EFI fuel pump. I'd say that's looking pretty clean at this point. Well, as I mentioned, this old fuel tank was designed for a carburetor. There's an electric fuel pump mounted underneath the car, which sucks fuel through this tube, which leads to a pickup in the bottom of the tank. OEMs moved a long time ago to in tank fuel pumps. The benefits of putting the pump in the tank are that surrounded by fuel, the pump remains cool, it runs quiet. And sitting on the bottom of the tank, it is always assured that the pickup is in a puddle of fuel. So I gotta get this pump in the tank. The fuel sender flange will not work, there's simply not enough space for the pump, the lines, the wiring. But Mazda is awesome and has provided this flat section right here, which incidentally is its own little baffled section of the tank. Here's the spot welds for the baffle. Just hole saw it out and build a flange. It's a quick tip if you're hole sawing through a thin sheet metal, take out the pilot bit and replace it with a rod、uh, so that it doesn't tear through the、uh, sheet metal. Okay, let's ruin an irreplaceable fuel tank. This little baffled corner of the tank is just perfect for an in tank EFI pump. Like you've seen me do many times before, I just drew out the flange、uh, quickly in CAD, mainly so I could get a location for all the bolt holes that I have to drill. Now, just carefully punch them out. Now, I just have a ton of holes to drill. 18 of them, of course, because there's nine holes total, and 
and a pilot hole for each, then the final size. If I'm a millimeter or two off right here, it's not the end of the world. The two 9 16 holes I just drilled provide passage for the uh, feed and return bulkheads. One final hole needed for the wiring bulkhead. The wiring bulkhead has an O-ring to seal against the flange, so I'm going to create a slight chamfer using a much larger 916 drill bit, which will give the O-ring just a little bit of room uh, to seat in. That seems to fit. Now to cut that out on the bandsaw. A little work with the uh, file to smooth out the saw marks, and then this flange is done. Looks like it'll do the job. Now I have to make a retaining ring that will go around the inside of this hole for this to bolt to, but since it's basically exactly the same steps, we'll take care of that off camera. Well, with the nine holes drilled for what is going to become the retaining ring for inside the tank. Now all I have to do is tap every single one of them out to M4. Turns out the outer diameter of the flange is the inside diameter of a four and a half inch hole saw. So instead of spending all that time on the band saw, I can just very slowly saw it out. My drill press does not go slow enough for a four and a half inch hole saw. I'm uh, using the hand drill to drill out the inner circle because the drill press turns too fast for these big hole saws and I damaged my four and a half inch hole saw cutting out the outer circle. That took an entire drill battery.
Now the reason I am welding those studs into place instead of just screwing them in is because this is going inside the tank and uh, I don't want fuel vapors traveling up the threads. Now, just eight more to do. Last one of these. Well, that retaining ring is uh, cooling down. There's just a little hump right here in the tank for some unknown reason. Just flatten that down so it doesn't interfere with the seating of my flanges. Not using the hammer and dolly here because I don't want to create a spark. This is a used fuel tank. Yeah, it's not bad. Now that the holes are marked using another paper template, I have to drill the same set of holes on the tank. problem I see all the time. No matter how hard I force, just too big for the hole. Okay, now this whole mess goes together like this. First, the inner flange. Both pieces of the inner flange. Uh, during mock-up, a little bit of tape for sanity because this piece wants to fall right back in. During final assembly, all the uh, sealants and uh, gaskets will hold that in place. Then the flange over the studs. And finally, all of the nuts. And you can see that it will seal with an inner and outer gasket and the tank simply clamped between the two flanges. And amazingly, nine times three, not even counting the fact that I had to do several of these holes in steps with different size bits, all of those holes drilled, and they still all bloody line up too. The pump will hang into the tank on some half inch aluminum square tubing about here. The pump fits kind of within a very narrow area. The hanger has to be at this uh, stud, which is this hole right here. zero chance of me being able to film how this pump uh, fits in this tank. But trust me when I say it's, it's pretty damn close. Um, I just need to uh, bend the rod a little bit this way 
once it's uh, welded into place. So, well, I'm going to go weld it. I have the uh, fuel pump flange bolted securely to a half inch metal plate so that hopefully I avoid warping it while welding. Twenty minutes after welding and this thing is still stupid hot so I'm just going to take the opportunity to trim some of this corner weld off which is uh, encroaching on the uh, ceiling part of the flange. Well, that seems to have stayed basically flat, which is a good thing because I had to put a ton of heat into this to weld it. This hanger rod just needs to be bent back a little bit to move the pump towards this way of the tank. Otherwise, the uh, filter interferes with one of the baffles. Okay, just make some quick marks here. You can see that I've already bent this a little bit by hand just to move it more to the center of the uh, tank. Now, there's no way for me to show you, but with the kink in this hanger, this pump is now in the perfect The fuel pump gets a nice foam sleeve which will isolate it from the mount and make it run a lot quieter. Because there's nothing more annoying in a daily driver than a constant fuel pump noise. Maybe I should have lubed that. There we go. Just one more test fitting to make sure everything still fits before welding. Yep, looks pretty good.
Next step is to cut a slit down the uh, center of this thing so that it can be clamped over the pump. That's center. That's center enough. Just uh, moving to a thicker grinding wheel. Okay, and probably mark the drill hole about there. In order to uh, hold these tabs together during welding, I'm just jigging it up quickly with a uh, bolt and using a uh, quarter inch nut as a spacer since the gap between the two halves of the fuel pump thingy is about a quarter inch. And that is a finished, but still very hot, fuel pump bracket. Well now, this thing is ready for final assembly. Fuel pump goes in first, but before it gets slipped in, you need to install the uh, pickup sock. Held on by this little irritating plastic retainer maybe push that on with a socket there we go and then the fuel pump just slides right in lining up the center line with this slit I've, uh, I've already pre-measured has to end up about there. Just going to leave it a bit loose for now because I'll need to slide it in and out to uh, attach the hose. The Dash 6 AN bulkhead fittings are going to seal with these copper crush washers, but I'm going to add just a little bit of Hylomar, which is the same non-hardening fuel resistant sealant we use when uh, assembling the engine for a little bit extra insurance. And a little bit of Hylomar on the bottom. Another O-ring for the bottom, and the nut. Oh, 
crush those copper washers down. There we go. Well, since I have no choice but to uh, clamp to the uh, pump output nipple, I'm going to have to use this twist lock hose, which I hate, on one of these push lock fittings, which I also hate. I'm not really too worried about marring this up with the vise. It's inside the fuel tank. A bit of oil. And I'm rarely successful at doing this, but... Bloody hell. Okay, I don't think that's coming off. Okay, it looks like it needs to be cut about here. Eh, nice thing about this hose, I guess, is that it's easy to cut. Okay, slide the pump back and put a fuel injection style T-bolt clamp on that end. Now this is going together permanently, so I oiled the uh, AN fitting to assure I don't gall the threads and to get some decent... Nice and tight. And slide the pump up to meet the... Uh now the inside diameter of this hose is just a little bit too big, so I'm going to have to go pretty hard on the clamp. There we go, I think. I think that's it. Okay, now I can align and uh, snug up the fuel pump. About there. Now the electrical bulkhead connector is next. This one is from Racetronics. Funny thing is, I actually spent years looking for someone who makes these things and stumbled across Racetronics only after I had built my own from scratch for my RX-7. Just a little bit of Hylomar to uh, help the O-ring a little bit. Now it just seals on the uh, hole that I'd countersunk with an O-ring. And then there's a little sort of clip here which uh, goes on to the other side. I'm not sure how I'm going to struggle with this off camera a little. And I think this is how it has to be pressed on. Yep. That seems to have worked. Now there's four wires on this uh, harness, but I only need two uh, for the fuel pump, so I guess the uh, other two are just going to hang around. Okay, so these connectors came with the, uh, the fuel pump kit, and they match the uh, connector on the pump body.
These connections uh, don't need any sort of dielectric grease because they will be protected by the uh, fuel and they just slide into the connector body and snap in place. Okay. Oops. And just into the pump. This is a polyurethane zip tie, so it should be okay long term in the fuel. I guess uh, in 20 years when I open the tank and if the zip tie is gone, then we know it wasn't okay. The absolute last part of this fuel pump assembly is the fuel return line, which is just a single straight AN fitting on a little bit of hose just so that the fuel doesn't spray down. Fuel pump assembly is fully assembled. Just really sucks that as awesome as this looked and turned out, no one will ever see it because it'll be inside the tank. Well, the moment of insertion has finally arrived and I am relieved to find out it still fits. And I gotta say, from outside the tank, man does this look good. Not gonna put all the bolts in now because I'm not even using a gasket since technically this is still mostly mock-up and this will have to come out again uh, so that the fuel tank can be coated internally. This is the stock uh, fuel line rubber bushing. Uh, it came with the car. I just cut some little slits in it so it will fit around my uh, new fuel lines and it seemed like the perfect thing to uh, use to protect the lines coming into the car. I just, just somehow wrestled it in there. I think it's designed to go in from the bottom up. <sighs> yeah, bottom up. I uh, not only made the feed line a bit shorter to uh, make sure it's differentiated from the return line, but also labeled on the car and the line itself. Now just the two fuel lines that go to the tank to uh, make, there I think. The fitting is dripping with lube, so it's time for insertion. Well, with the feed line already in place, 
I just have to route this return line. This is the last set of hoses that I have to make in a while, I think, which is kind of sad in a way because, honestly, I love me some hose. That uh, tank retaining bolt seems to be a perfect spot for the fuel pump ground. It's uh, out of the way and it's nice and sheltered within the car. So it's just a matter of popping on a ring terminal to match. A little bit of dielectric grease in here to protect the uh, connection. Just give her a good crimp. Okay, so just plug that back in. And now on the final assembly, I'll of course use dielectric grease and some washers to assure uh, good contact for that uh, ring terminal. But for now, I'm just kind of assembling things for mock-up, so you don't need to worry about making a greasy mess with the dielectric. And just some tape to hold that in place. Well, this stock body harness grommet seems to be about as good a place as uh, any to uh, pull the harness through if I can get it, which I can. Now there is but a single wire that goes back to the fuel pump and that is a 12 gauge 12 volt switched wire from the mega squirt. So I am just adding a single terminal weather pack connector to it before I do this in the car because it's a lot more convenient to do this on the bench versus on my back under the dash. Then I will run it back to the pump. Just a little bit of dielectric grease on the connection, better safe than sorry. Okay, back into the car. If you recall, all the way back to episode 24, when I wired the Mega Squirt, the fuel pump relay is already in place. So, it's just a matter of running the single wire and plugging it in to the uh, Mega Squirt harness. And for now, we'll just tuck this connector kind of out of the way and maybe hook it on this thing. This is actually where the, uh, the stock body harness runs in this groove right here underneath the uh, trim. So, seems like a good enough place for me to run my wire. Double walled adhesive lined heat shrink tubing. This is uh, pre-stripped for me, which is kind of nice, but I just want a little bit more off the top.
As with all my soldered connections, this one gets some uh, flux remover to remove that corrosive flux before the uh, heat shrink is applied. And with that, the wiring's done, which of course means the fuel system is done. Okay, there's still a few little things to do, like a few little clamps for the hard fuel lines at the back and some uh, clamps for the fuel lines in the engine bay, but that's kind of miscellaneous stuff, so I'll probably do that in a miscellaneous episode or something. What's next? I don't know. I think what I may do is a short episode on the POR15 fuel tank sealing system. Um, you may also have noticed, uh, be probably because of the dramatically increased audio quality, that yes, I have a new camera. My trusty 10-year-old Panasonic Lumix met its demise uh, hitting the concrete floor of the shooting range. It blew to pieces. I tried to put it back together. I just couldn't. So I bought a new one. Uh, that said, Next episode, I will begin shooting in HD because, well, now I can.